everyone, Sir Janus here and welcome to another episode of Einsteinatics TV. This time, we are going to put focus on quarter 3, week 3, which deals with the menstrual cycle to include its myths and facts. For today's session, here are our objectives. For objective number 1, we are going to describe the important events of the menstrual cycle using diagram, mark the events of menstrual cycle in a calendar, and for number three, respect the emotional and physical changes in one's body during adolescent age. You might be wondering what happens during puberty. As humans, we are born with a complete set of six organs, however, this becomes active until between the ages of 10 and 18. In males, the testes start to make sperm and in females, the ovaries start to release eggs. And this stage is now known as puberty. And based on our previous discussions, this is caused by hormones which is controlled by the endocrine system. During this important time, many changes take place in the bodies of young men and women. So what are the changes that takes place in a human body, specifically in male, during puberty? Of course, there is an evident change in height, in the face, in the private organs, the voice of males become deepens, your armpits sweat, and of course, there is hair growth on the face, the arms, legs, chest, armpits, and between your legs. On the other hand, here are the changes that takes place in females during puberty. Just like in males, their height gets taller, the breast starts to grow, and of course this is where the stage where menstruation or their period begins. This time, let us compare the changes that takes place in male and female during puberty. For the similarities, both male and female may get pimples in the face or in the body and also there is an evident growth of hair all over the body. Of course, the differences is that for the male, their voice deepens, they may grow chest on their hairs and of course, there is the changes that takes place in their private organs. For the female, on the other hand, they would start to develop or grow their breasts and of course, they would start with their menstruation. This time, let us put our focus on menstruation. Menstruation is an important part of puberty for girls, which is the beginning of their monthly cycle and thus it is called as the menstrual cycle. This involves the preparation of the uterus lining so that it can receive a fertilized egg. If, however, an egg is fertilized, then it can implant itself in the prepared uterus lining. In the case that the egg is not fertilized, the lining of the uterus breaks down and is lost from the body and this is called the menstruation or a period. So, what are the important concepts that we should always remember when dealing with the menstrual cycle? First is that it is a rhythmical series of physiological changes that occur in fertile women. And we all know that the menstrual cycle is governed or is controlled by the endocrine system. And menstrual cycle is necessary for reproduction. And the average length which is 28 days but this typically varies with shorter and longer cycles meaning this is not the same or this is not true to all women. Another term that we should be familiar is the term menarche, which signifies or means a woman's first menstruation. This typically occurs around the age of 12 but it depends on the overall health and diet. Another term that we should remember is menopause, which marks the end of a woman's reproductive phase. And this commonly occurs between the age of 45 and 55. And just like a woman's first menstruation, 
This is also largely due to the result of genetics. There are three different levels that is observable for the physiological changes during menstrual cycle. This includes the neuroendocrine level, the ovaries, and the uterus. The menstrual cycle itself can be divided into three major phases or stages. The first one is the menstrual phase. The second one will be the proliferative or the follicular phase. And for the last phase, that would be the secretory or the luteal phase. So here are the average start and end day of the different phases, assuming that it is a 28-day cycle. Menstrual phase usually lasts for 1 to 4 days. Proliferative phase between 5 to 13. Ovulation period is to 13 to 16. And for the secretory phase or the luteal phase, usually it takes place from day 16 until day 28. This time, let us put focus on the changes that takes place for each phase. Let's start with the menstrual phase which takes place during day 1 up to day 5. Now, menstrual phase marks the first day of menstruation and lasts till the fifth day of the menstrual cycle. Here are the following events that may occur during this phase. On this phase, this is where the uterus shed its inner lining of soft tissue and blood vessels which exits body from the vagina in the form of menstrual fluid. So, in this phase, blood loss of 10 ml to 80 ml is considered normal. This is where you may experience abdominal cramps and these cramps are caused by the contraction of the uterine and the abdominal muscles to expel the menstrual fluid. The next phase of the menstrual cycle is known as the follicular phase. This also begins on the first day of menstruation but it will last until the 13th day. Here are the following events that may occur during this phase. The pituitary gland secretes a hormone that stimulates the egg cells in the ovary to grow. And one of these egg cells begin to mature in a sac-like structure called follicle and it would take 13 days for the egg cell to reach maturity. So while the egg cell matures, its follicle secretes a hormone that stimulates the uterus to develop of blood vessels and soft tissue called endometrium in preparation if fertilization would happen because this is where the fertilized egg would attach. Another phase of the menstrual cycle is known as the ovulation phase which takes place on day 14. On the 14th day of the cycle, the pituitary gland secretes a hormone that causes the ovary to release the matured egg cell. The released egg cell is swept into the fallopian tube by the cilia of the fimbrae and these are the projections located at the end of the fallopian tube close to the ovaries and cilia are slender hair-like projections on each fimbria. On this stage, this is where females or women are most fertile and has a higher chance or the highest chance of getting pregnant because of the matured egg cell. Now let's proceed to the last stage of the menstrual cycle which is known as the luteal phase which takes place in day 15 to day 28. Here are the events that occur during this phase. The egg cell release during ovulation stays in the fallopian tube for 24 hours. If however a sperm cell does not impregnate the egg cell within the time, the egg cell disintegrates. The luteal phase also leads to the next menstrual cycle. This time, let us have a quick review on what we have discussed on the menstrual cycle. For day 1 to 5, this is where menstruation starts and uterine lining decreases in thickness to a minimum. For day 6 and 14, this is where 
lining becomes thicker with the increased blood supply and for day 14 this is where ovulation takes place for day 14 to 28 the lining remains thick to ready for implantation of fertilized ovum if however fertilization did not take place then the uterine lining will break down marking the end of the 28 day cycle and would start back at day one which is menstruation this is a comparison between the different cycles from the uterine to the ovarian hormones up to the ovarian cycle as you can see the changes that takes place in the uterine lining from follicular phase down to the luteal phase you can also see the different levels of hormones that is produced during different days and of course in the ovarian cycle the changes that takes place in the ovum here is another look on the classification of menstrual cycle phases from menstruation follicular phase to the ovulation and of course the luteal phase to sum it up day 0 to day 5 this is where menstruation occurs this is where uterine lining break down the unfertilized ovum is discharged through the vagina day 5 to day 14 marks the ovulation period wherein this is where the uterine lining starts to thicken and there is an increase in blood supply and oxygen in preparation for the fertilized ovum day 14 this is where ovulation occurs and not occur during pregnancy in day 14 to 28 or day 0 uterine lining becomes very thick ready to receive the fertilized ovum and this is where it would part ways if fertilization would not take place then you are going to go right back to day 0 to 5 for the menstruation if however fertilization takes place which means an ovum meets sperm in oviduct then no menstruation would occur and uterine lining will not break down because this would serve or would supply the fertilized ovum this time let us discover the different myths and facts that surrounds the menstrual cycle That's it for today's lesson. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe for more videos in the future. Please feel free to drop your comments below or suggest contents for our next videos.